up YouTube family? Gerald Greenlee here with Clean and Green Lawn Service, LLC. <laughs> I just have to put that on there now. No idea why. I'll go back to Clean and Green here shortly. But uh, anyway, um, it's Friday morning, about 1020. Headed out to uh, get on the first yard of the day. I got about four. I need to get done today. Uh, this is the furthest one from my house, so I actually need to stop by and check on somebody real quick from the church. Got something I need to give them. So I'm gonna go do that. Stop by there, run, knock this lawn out, uh, and then get back out to the area that I live in. I actually have three of them that I do in town, but uh, the way it worked out, I did two of them the other day, and I got to go do this other one today. So anyway, normally I would do them all on the same day, but just didn't work out that way this time. So anyway, I'm gonna take care of this and uh, get back out here in the area where I live, where the other yards are, and because I need to get back around the church, I got a guy supposed to be coming to do some work there today, but I just left it open up for him the area where he needs to work at. He's a great guy. Don't have to worry about anything, but. He's running a little bit behind this morning. He's got me a little bit behind because I was planning on being on the yard by 9 o'clock. So anyway, it'll all work out. But uh, I'll try to get you a little bit of footage. Getting these bad boys fueled up. Uh, not a whole lot of fuel this morning. But... Uh, seven gallons all right here we go first stop of the day let's get a little bit of look here at this stuff kind of see what we're dealing with all across the uh all across the yard here got some winter grass a few sticks and stuff but uh nothing too bad one thing i love about this customer here um elderly gentleman and why uh, they typically keep the yard pretty clean i mean if he sees me show up and there's stuff in the yard he'll be out here picking up sticks you know how a lot of people are man you you got sticks and toys and pine cones and got to mulch up no telling what so anyway i'm gonna uh go ahead and get string trimmer out and get everything edged up trimmed up and then i'll get you some footage of the mower uh...
right, here we go. I still got this on the chest strap, but uh, I thought I'd try to give you a little look around the yard, maybe. Just kind of walk around. As you can tell, this yard's got quite a bit of stuff in it. But, this was the first cut of the year. This yard, this lawn is irrigated too. Not right now, but he does have an irrigation system. So, you probably see all this stuff I went around. A lot of trimming. Um, some of this stuff I probably don't even have to trim, but I just do. So, that yard next door is mine too. Well, it's not mine, but I cut it. So, actually, I got to go touch up something in that backyard. A lot of winter weed stuff, and uh, <clears throat> it, uh, there's a little clump of weed I missed. You know that, um, a lot of winter weed stuff in that backyard, and some of that stuff is so fine, it didn't cut good. So, I'm gonna run back over it for him. You gotta be kidding. I just blew off this whole property and didn't have my camera on. GoPro. Boom. Anyway, you can see it. Got a little bit of riding footage. Um, everything blown off. Now, you may be wondering about these leaves on the lawn. I'm actually just here cutting the lawn. Now, I did try to, I did, I did use my Raptor SD with a shoot blocker on it. Because I haven't put one on my X1 yet, so. And, you know, there's a lot of little sticks and, you know, little dead wood. Um, kind of using my SD for my rough mower. But... If you're looking around at some of these leaves then man you didn't get all those leaves up i just got paid to cut um one of the things that i'll do better at next year uh i've just kind of filled up my client base you know to where i'm full now and you know customers have been kind of hit and miss but the ones that have uh been with me last year and are with me this year um is becoming is becoming more consistent and anyway i got about half the ones i had last year year round and so i just keep their property looking decent all the time um then i got the bi-weeklies like this one which is nothing wrong with that in my opinion especially the way the grass grows here at this particular property but i don't service it for about three months and one of the things I haven't done a good job at is saying, hey, and I've started this with all my new customers. Hey, if you don't do a year round, then there will be a there'll be a cleanup fee, you know, when I come and do the first the first cut um, of the new year. This camera's killing me, man. It's not on the right mount. Ooh, that dust. All right, get that off. And so. What I got to do is a better job of communicating that and making sure, you know, that the customers know. In other words, I, I'm not going to wait. I'm not waiting three weeks out. No, I'm just not going to do this. But again, remember, I don't do this. I don't do this like my sole income to make a living off of. It's uh, most everything I make on this kind of goes back into the business. So I'm not putting food on the table with this. So three weeks out. I'm not going to say to somebody, I haven't told them three months, four months during the winter, I haven't told them that, hey, you're going to have a cleanup fee, okay? When I start now, this, this customer contacted me yesterday, and of course I told them, hey, whenever you get ready, just let me know. I'm not going to say, oh, by the way, you know. It's $60 to blow out the beds a little bit and, you know, kind of mulch up the leaves and, and all that kind of good stuff. I'm not going to do that. Uh, now, could I do that? Absolutely. I'm going to get a picture here real quick. I could do that. But I'm not going to do that because I just don't think it's right. 
In other words, the cleanup on about four properties this year, I've ate that. Now, I haven't cleaned it up perfect, but I have, to get their yard back in shape, a little bit each cut, we'll get it back to where it needs to be when the grass starts growing. And I've ate the cost anywhere from what I probably would have charged maybe $60 to $80 or $100. And on a, on a handful of properties, I just ate that cost. And the reason I did that is because I did not communicate with the customers. And communication is my responsibility. Uh, you know, you say, well, they know it's going to cost more. Well, maybe so, maybe not. But communication is my responsibility. So what I'll do this year, all of my customers, I kind of confirmed all my customers back in January, the ones from this previous year. And so what I'll do is uh, I'll send out a letter probably after the cutting season and, you know, tell them I appreciate your business and all, looking forward to the 2020 season. And then I will remind them, I will put in there then about cleanup fees if you're not a year-round customer. Of course, now all of my new customers, this has already been communicated to them, so they already know. Uh, but existing customers, but everybody will get the same letter, and the letters will be uh, specific to each customer because we'll talk about price for the next year, you know, estimated price at least. Some things could affect that. I mean, we don't know with the economy. Fuel could shoot back up to $4 a gallon, obviously. Uh, that might change, A, whether they can afford to have lawn service done, or B, you know, how much it's going to cost for me to do it. Uh, if, if fuel goes up a dollar in, you know, 60 or 80 cents a gallon. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, and I hope it doesn't, but I'm just saying that the reality is, you know, that could happen. And so I'll send them out a price, what they can expect, and then once we get over in about February, for the people who are not year-round, we'll go ahead and confirm that. Now, my yearly folks, they run from January through December, and uh, by the end of December, I'll have them confirm for the new year and any kind of price adjustments that we need to make. And, uh, you know, so anyway, uh, I still got two more to do, but uh, I got some business to take care of, church related, I need to get done. Um, we're trying to, uh, we're trying to be cautious here uh, with the virus that's going around, Corona, whatever, 19, however you say it. Um, anyway, we're trying to be cautious with that. We do have uh, a significant number of elderly uh, people in our congregation, like 60 and older. And I know if you're 60, you're going, wait a minute, I'm not that old. And I get that. But just trying to be uh, sensitive. Uh, so we're fixing to cut some services and uh, do some things along those lines. Because here's the deal. Some of the older members are the most faithful ones in the church. And, and even though I say, hey, you need to be careful, you need to stay home, you know, use caution. Guess who's going to be there? Senior adults. They're going to be there. They're going to be at church. They want to shake the pastor's hand, hug the pastor's neck. Now, I'm not worried about getting sick, uh, but I don't want to put somebody else in a situation where they get sick. So, um, anyway, we're trying to we're trying to work through this, and so I need to get some information out to my church family, and then hopefully I'll get around knocking those other two uh, lawns out today. I got I got two more to cut. And I got a hedge job to do. Whether I get them done today or have to work all day tomorrow messing with that stuff, one way or the, another, I need to get it done. So, anyway, enough rambling for now. Holler at y'all in a few minutes. All right, here we go after a little break. We at the, we at the big property now. I think I may go ahead and uh, yeah, I'll probably just go ahead and cut this whole thing today. I don't always cut this field out here, but. Let me just go ahead and get it all done. Be done with it. Looks like another vehicle at home today. Not used to that truck being there. Hopefully somebody's here that can move it. But anyway, we'll see. Try to get you a little bit of footage anyway. What we got going on here. Get over here and uh, figure out where in the world I parked that last time. I think I parked right up in here do the yard which I probably need to park somewhere else let me get off this thing and get parked as you can see that's a good bit of trimming here um, on this property 
good news is with the sticks and stuff that fall because it is such a wooded area I just kick them over to the side like that but property also goes back in here to a limb pile down there but I haven't been taking anything down there just anyway getting ready to uh unleash the x1 
Yes, yes, yes. Got that bad boy done. Got it done. Let me show you something here real quick. Yeah, maybe we can do this. Well, I'm going to start the stopwatch just so you can see it. I've actually already did my... Let me see if we can get here. All right, there's the time counting. But that third lap is where it actually stopped at, which is like 228 something. Now, um, what is that? Well, <clears throat> that's my time uh, to service this property. Now, that's only on the property time. But uh, every, every uh, property that I do, I mean, sometimes I forget. Sometimes I mess up. But m generally speaking... I take and uh, do the stopwatch on the property and uh, trimmer line. Always keep trimmer line in your back pocket. It fell on the ground. So um, I do a time on every property. And the reason I do that uh, is because I want to know how much time I spend on that property. Even though I'm doing it by myself, doing it solo. Uh, you know, if I had two guys here, I could still do it and just multiply it by two, which I know I'm not having to teach any of you how to do math but um i do that because we always talk about knowing our numbers well, the only way to know your numbers is to keep a check on them now i try to get an average uh i tell you what though you see that two hours and 28 minutes last time i cut this whole property this six and a half acre property last time i cut this now i think the grass was probably a little bit thicker um it had been let go a little bit longer. I probably did some more trimming, maybe some more picking up sticks. But at any rate, that was two hours and 28 minutes this time. Last time I did this full property, it was four hours and five minutes. It was two hours and 54 minutes of nothing but mowing on, uh, on, on the Raptor SD, the 54-inch Raptor SD. So the X1 definitely definitely made a difference on that and i'd have to go back and look at the exact difference in the time on that and i could kind of compare my trimming time and all but uh anyway um i guess that's the last one for today like i said earlier i got tied up with some uh not tied up just responsibility trying to get some stuff done for the church and I usually cut all day Friday, but I got hung up this morning, got a late start, and then I had to stop and uh, get some messages sent out and some stuff posted and phone messages and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, so here's the property. Um, I know the lighting is probably not that great. There's a big pine tree right there. That's the, that's the property line. And then, of course, back here to the house. And uh, there's the house back there, and then it goes a little bit behind the house. I don't know if you noticed it on the video, but uh, there's a pretty steep incline back there um, on that hill. And uh, also, I've showed you this before, but there's a lane. There's a lane that goes back in there. Uh, back in there a ways. I cut it too. So, anyway, hey, appreciate y'all taking the time to watch the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed a little bit of time lapse. And there was some real time I did, but I will probably take that and speed it up. And so the lawnmower will sound like it's uh, battery operated. Whee! But uh, anyway, appreciate y'all watching. If you haven't already, uh, hit that subscribe button down there for me. And, uh, if you like this kind of stuff, if you don't, don't subscribe to it. You know, I, I know a lot of people are trying to get... Uh, subscribers and you know if i get them i get them i'm not gonna worry a whole lot about that but honestly if somebody subscribes to my channel i want them to watch the videos <laughs> you know i mean if, you, if if you're not i know a lot of these grow show things and I, i've been in some of those rooms and stuff before and and that's fine but like i go in there and uh you know something something bakery or somebody that likes to play video games or you know whatever and again there's nothing wrong with that make sure i got my equipment defender locked down um there's nothing wrong with that but 
I'm not gonna get on a channel and watch somebody play video games. And you know, if, if somebody's not gonna watch lawn mowing or or me throw the camera all over the place, um, or building stuff, or you know, sometimes just talking about life and God and stuff like that. I mean, if, if a person don't like that, then heck, don't subscribe to my channel because no point anyway. I'd rather have viewers versus subscribers. So I'd rather have 50 viewers versus 500 subscribers uh, so we can talk and we can interact. Uh, I try to watch uh, most of the stuff I'm subscribed to. I try to watch uh, videos, you know, and most of mine is lawn care or fishing or, uh, you know, handyman stuff or uh, theological stuff, you know, but it's stuff I'm going to watch. So not all of it all the time but when i got the opportunity anyway i'm rambling again so if you like rambling click the like button and comment but uh, anyway appreciate you watching uh hope you have a great weekend may the lord richly bless you